Donkey Kong entered the arcade circuit in 1981, became a huge hit, broke ground in the platforming genre, spawned off several sequels, and eventually branched out multiple franchises that would forever change the face of the gaming world. Two sequels would emerge from the original series, and all would be ported to various consoles, the NES being one of them to get all three. Let's take a look at each. In the original, Donkey Kong kidnaps a damsel in distress named Pauline, and it's up to you to lead this overall clad plumber to the rescue. At the time, he was simply called Jumpman, and he was billed as a carpenter, but that was just an alias. Mario didn't have the leverage to get his true identity into the public yet, but as we all know, that would change. The game looks and feels a lot like the arcade version, so if you picked up this cart hoping for some giant overhaul, then you'll be disappointed. It's a genuine adaptation of the original, but it's not without a few corners cut. One of the key innovations of the arcade game were the cutscenes, something that was rarely if ever found in a video game. Donkey Kong stomping the beams to shift their position showed why they were so slanted, and carrying Pauline up the beams between each stage provided an explanation as to why there were multiple levels in the first place. Another missing ingredient is one of the stages. The first, third, and fourth stages are all there, but the second stage has been scrapped, cutting the total down from four to three. Even though this is an early NES game, I'm pretty sure they could have found a way to slip both of these omissions into the game. Despite these losses, this is still a great port. Hopping from platform to platform, jumping over barrels, smashing enemies with a hammer, it's simple but fun. And the fact that all the stages are different keeps the game from dragging on. Donkey Kong Jr. followed a year later, and it not only advanced the story, but it was a very interesting protagonist shift that you don't really see in video games very often. Following the events of the first game, Mario has Donkey Kong held captive, and it's up to Junior to free him. All four levels from the arcade are included in this NES version, and much like the first Donkey Kong, this port is also well done and true to its arcade counterpart. The cutscenes were once again cut out, save for the finale when Junior unlocks the floor underneath his dead and catches him while Mario plummets to the ground below, although it is altered a bit. This game focused more on climbing, whereas the first game was more about platforming, although both games did incorporate both traits. And this time, instead of using the hammer to smash hazards, Junior knocks fruit off the vines to crush the enemies below. I don't really know how or why Mario has control of all these snap jaws and birds and sparks and shit. Speaking of these sparks, it's kind of funny how much they resemble the sparks that would appear later on Super Mario Bros. 2, especially since that wasn't even a Mario game in its original form. The interesting thing about these two games is, like I said, the protagonist-antagonist role reversal, and that it makes you wonder, does Donkey Kong really have bad intentions kidnapping Pauline, or is he just a wild beast acting on instinct? And is Mario a hero for rescuing Pauline and restraining the big bad monster, or is he an inhumane bastard for keeping him in captivity? It might be a combination of both, or it might be open-ended and up for interpretation. Either way, these games complement each other greatly, they're peanut butter and jelly which is good reason why they were bundled together on the NES Donkey Kong Classics package. Then there's Donkey Kong 3, which came out a year after Donkey Kong Jr. Mario had moved on from the Donkey Kong project and teamed up with his brother Luigi for the game Mario Brothers, so Donkey Kong had to get a new nemesis, Stanley the Bugman. Donkey Kong's mission is apparently to bust into Stanley's greenhouse and sick a bunch of insects onto his flowers, killing them. So you'll control Stanley, shooting his bug spray at the insects and up Donkey Kong's ass, causing him to move up the vines with each shot, with the goal of getting him to the top out of the greenhouse to advance to the next round. It's not a terrible game, but it's much more bland than the first two, and making it a huge departure from its predecessors, going from platformer to shooter, is a questionable move. Donkey Kong 3 pretty much faded from most people's memories, and Stanley the Bugman faded into obscurity. If these three games were movies, Donkey Kong 3 would be a direct-to-video release. You could even compare it to the Godfather series. Not to say that Donkey Kong was the godfather of video games, 
but they were similar in that the first two were done very well and tied together into one story, and the third was just crap that far removed itself from the first two and doesn't even belong in the same sentence. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.